Hey everybody, so today we are going to be going through part one of a new series that I am kicking off that's going to be over the course of a year. I am going to be answering the questions that you have asked me through LinkedIn, through my email, and also through YouTube. And these are primarily focused on ontology, knowledge graph, semantic search, and of course, machine learning. So today we're going to be going through a tool that most people start out with because it's free and open, and that's called Protege. It can seem like a daunting tool to start with though. So today we're gonna to be going through some tips to get started with it. And if I missed any questions that you are curious about, make sure you leave them down below and I will put them in a future video. All right, so with that, let's go get started. So the first thing you're going to do is to Google Web Protege. It's usually the very first thing that shows up. Go there and make an account. It's completely free and it sets you up for success for everything else we're going to do in any series around Web Protege. Web Protege is pretty much the main way to do collaborative modeling of information that is not easy to do in the standalone protege. The only way I know how to do it is if you uh, host a local instance on a server and then you can have people popping in and out. Always have a buddy system. So as you are doing your modeling, you always wanna make sure that you have either the person who's going to put this, this model and from here on out, I'm just going to call it model because you can do lots of different types of model, whether it's ontology, taxonomy, knowledge graph, what have you. This is critical for success is making sure that whoever's going to use this can pop in and see how you're modeling things so that they can make sure that one, if they're developing things alongside. So for instance, if you're using this to create, let's say a canonical schema, that they maybe are looking at the content that will be populating that schema. It's pretty good for you both to be on the same page. Outside of that, having other fellow ontologists, taxonomists, you can make sure that this is not just your own worldview. You always wanna make sure you have at least one other set of eyes on this. So for this, I'm going to go into the uh, terminology mapping. So this is one that I did um, a while back that was looking at how to map uh, users natural language, not natural language processing, natural language, uh, to uh, specific taxonomies in the engineering space focused on machine learning. Now you can see this was a demo, so it's very small. Um, sometimes it populates with the ID instead of the label. So here's one way to fix that. So for instance, in here I have but RDF label and I have what the actual label is. The IRI is up here. So sometimes that's all you'll see is, is this end part, because that's the ID. Um, that's not helpful if you're a human. So to fix that, you go up to display and here you can display anything that you have in your annotations. So let's say instead of the label, which honestly is what you would want to select if it's not already selected. Let's say we want to do pref label. So you would do SCOS pref label. And this is then going to look at this field, right? Pref label. And this is what would then show up. Okay. Now you see what I did there? Now all of these are showing the pref label. Now let's switch it back because that's not great. Now we're back to normal. This is the other nice thing about the collaboration features is you can make notes to each other. So even if you are collaborating, if you're not collaborating in real time, which you can do with this, um, it, again, it's going to depend on internet speed and some of those other things, but it's basically real time. You can go in and make notes to each other. And that's super important when you are doing anything that's global. If you're working with um, others in projects uh, that maybe they're on the other side of the globe, they can still talk to you even if you're offline, which is really nice. And those would show up here. This is kind of like the change history. Uh, so let's say we go to classification rule. This is called provenance. So this is incredibly important for any kind of data governance. 
And while Web Protege by itself doesn't allow you to put in any rules around who, like there's there, there are different roles. Some people can just view, some people can edit, um, that sort of thing. But as far as what they can do in here, um, there's, there's no rules per se around that. But you can, once you are done modeling, put this into a different tool or into your own systems and have some of those rules around them. And then this history, this is history of the entire model, not just by entity. All right, so you can populate more views onto your main workspace if that's something that is imperative to you. And honestly, a lot of people I know that work in tools like this do really need to customize their workspace. But let's say as you're going through this, uh, you really want to keep track of any notes that people are adding. You can't really see that in this view. So what you're going to do is you're going to click this little thing next to each one of these. And you can add a view. So here, let's say I want to keep track of all comments, not just the entity that I'm working on. So I can add that. And I'm going to say that I'm going to put that um, in the bottom corner here. So now as I make notes, I can see them populating down here. So when you start, you can start a thread here and you can say, hey, sup, <laughs> what are you working on today? You can see that and then we can continue our dialogue. Um, now, obviously, you can hit resolve. So these are not normally supposed to be chats. These are, hey, um, something's wrong here today. Um, Sam, can you please check the SCOS label here? And that's what we would have. And you can go ahead and resolve that if you want. And then it goes away. It does go into a cache somewhere else in your history. So you can always get it back if you'd like like that. Okay, so now on to the most important tip, in my opinion, on how to use Web Protege built in, which traditional Protege does not. So let's say you are working with Dublin Core, so that's DC, then you can get a whole list of the DC pieces to what you want to add to to this model. So we want to maybe say DC contributor. And then I'm going to say uh, Ashley. Now, what if I'm working with SCOS? SCOS gives you the whole list of SCOS. Now this note is different than this note. This is a collaboration note. This is an actual note on this specific class. So do not use um, maybe is a good note. Now I should probably say why you shouldn't use it when that was done. Um, you know, adding in some dates to your notes is always best practice. Or let's say you're just starting and you don't know a lot about RDF and RDFS. So RDF, or let's say OWL, you can go and look at all the different things you can put in with OWL. So all of these are incredibly useful when you are starting out. So let's do our deprecated since we said do not use. And we're going to say 2022. There we go. So not saying that's best point, which is what I just did there. This is just to show you and so that the error went off the screen. But these are some of the tips that I wanted to go over for those that are struggling to use traditional protege. Um, there's a lot more that I can unpack here and I can show you in future videos. So with that, I hope this has been very helpful for you. If there are questions that you have, please leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to include them in upcoming videos. So with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.